put more text into it. Right. Because before it was totally blank. I'm sorting out the border to make it more professional-like. The gap between boys' and girls' achievement continues to be a problem nationwide, with girls often outperforming boys. For GCSE results, the closest any school has come to closing this gap is 4%. Despite being an overcrowded school with a higher than average number of EAL pupils, between 2005 and 2008, Hall Green School in Birmingham has come consistently close to 4%. The English department has had notable success in narrowing this gender gap. A couple of years ago, the gap was as wide as 25 percentage points. So at GCSE, the girls were really carrying the bulk of the success and the boys were, were that far behind. Now, in recent times, we got that down in 2008 to just seven. In this programme, we will see six of the most successful measures the school has taken to help raise boys' achievement, focusing on the work of the English department. We first started to look at the problem of boys' underachievement in English when it was obvious to us that we had a range of pupils, many of whom were perhaps very successful in other subjects and still weren't quite secure in the grades which we could expect from them here in English. And that led us to thinking about the shape of our curriculum, our teaching style, and making sure we were engaging through those things with what would motivate the boys to achieve their maximum potential. It was commented on that you weren't very happy that you had to sit boy, girl, boy, girl in your English lessons. Now, some of us have tried to be more flexible with that. What do you think about that? Do you think it's been effective? Do you think it's working? Have people not done it? As part of their approach towards raising boys' achievement at the school, the English department has also introduced a system of regular pupil feedback. Pupil Voice provides the boys with the opportunity to contribute their ideas to the teaching and learning process. It's covered like all stars. We recognised quite early on that we had a perception of what was going on in the curriculum, um, but that was only one side of the story. So we needed to hear much more from the pupils how they were reacting to what was going on in the lessons. How do you feel about drafting your coursework in lessons as opposed to it being homework? Writing it out, you can get like the teacher to help you with it. So then you just it's easier to type up basically. I think when some teachers like say you for homework, you try to rush it and so you don't you can do anything else. But I think it's better in school because then everyone's like more or less on the same line and So the boys will be very honest with us about what's working for them, but they'll also feed back things that perhaps aren't happening with the consistency that we would hope. And then we can go back to the department and say, look, this is the perception of pupils. They liked the idea of being able to draft coursework in school. Well, this is the big change, isn't it? And again, it's come from them a little bit. How have they got on with it over the last... Because they've done two now, haven't they? They felt there was a lot more progress with it because they were able to get the help and the support that they needed. The voice itself is useful, but also the confidence the boys gain from feeling that they're trusted and they're part of the shaping of their learning has proved to be invaluable. 30 seconds, everything this poem makes you think about, makes you feel, maybe it makes you think of a picture or a sound. And what we tried to do was look at learning styles and think about what boys traditionally excelled at and recognise that perhaps what they excelled at in other lessons provided them with stimulus that they weren't getting in English. So, for example, most lessons now have perhaps three, maybe four quick activities in them. And that means the boys can focus on that one activity be successful and perhaps get some feedback on it before moving on to the next one. Ten seconds left. Three, two, one. Pens down. Minaz, can you tell me one thing you wrote down? You know, when he wants to keep it a secret... Boys, for example, are less good at perhaps sitting for a long time working independently. So we've increased the range of group work um, and kinesthetic activities. So you'll now see in lessons pupils moving around much more. So it's more passionate, yes. And, and the commas pause, so it's sort of, you emphasise more keywords. It helps you take in more because when you're sitting in front, listening to a teacher just talk, sometimes you can switch off and miss an important bit. To tackle underachievement, the school has also adopted a five year view of the curriculum. The school's aim is for skills to be progressively developed to equip pupils for their Year 11 exams and beyond. It's a firm intention in the school to try to treat as many of the pupils as individuals as possible. So the, the idea of a one-size-fits-all curriculum um, it, it is becoming a thing of the past. We're finding this as a useful way of, of offering extra challenge to the more gifted and talented boys. Um, so some of them are now finding themselves at a position where um, they're entering their GCSEs earlier than they expected. Even in Year 7, pupils at the school are encouraged to begin to develop GCSE-level skills in their English lessons. 
My year 10s at the moment writing their GCSE coursework, this is what they're struggling with. Structuring it and including their ideas to make it really clear to the marker is what they find difficult. So by the time that you guys get to doing your coursework in year 10, how good are you going to be? Brilliant. Rada? Excellent. Fantastic. This is why we're building on this now. GCSE, parts of it rely on a personal response. Um, so that's something that we're practicing now, but using complex text. The lads, I, I think if they can't do it, sometimes have the habit of, of saying, well, I won't. Um, and introducing it now, practicing these skills, means that when it comes to us doing the coursework and doing the exams, it's something that's a habit. Now then, B, is it knives with an F or knives with a V? F with a V, well done. Running alongside GCSE English, the school has taken the unusual step of introducing an adult literacy qualification to target underachieving boys. We identified over several years that our lowest achieving groups at GCSE were often dominated by boys. You may find a couple of girls within those groups on an academic level but being in those groups wasn't beneficial for them or particularly beneficial for the boys. So what we did was start to trial um, groups of the less academic boys on their own. Within that room, although it's very male, the relationship there can be built and tuned into the boys' learning style. We've also introduced other qualifications. So whilst they do their GCSE, we've introduced the adult literacy course. Now that allows them to have very quick success. Right then, which do you think is the first spelling error? Go on. Show me. Dictionaries, you know it's wrong, don't you? What should it be, Sully? R-E-S. Joe, you spotted that a couple of minutes ago. Well done. Another spelling error. Alan is adult literacy and numeracy. It's targeted at people who may not be able to get a GCSE or can't commit themselves to the GCSE. The alternative was to do entry level at GCSE, which is just, it doesn't stretch the pupils. We've discovered that it's actually harder than we expected it, but that's good because it gives them a sense of achievement. And the important thing is for these boys, uh, they are going to find it difficult to achieve a high grade um, in GCSE. And I've always been realistic with these lads to say that to target to see would be wonderful, but it's going to be difficult to get. That's not to say impossible. But given an alternative course that has credibility, has point scores, I think is valuable. A boy did this in a media class not so long ago. Um, Asad, take us through it. The introduction of GCSE media studies at the school is also helping to motivate the boys to achieve. Why are you assuming? We introduced GCSE media as an option in the last three years. Last year we were delighted with the results we got. 75% of the pupils who took the course got A star to C, and that was one of the strongest results across the school. And boys particularly have engaged with that subject. I'm not sure if I'm a bit just like detailed enough, I, I don't know. It looks, it looks good on the screen because there's loads of different colours and stuff. Here it's just like a complete silhouette. Within the subject there's a strong creative element and we've been able to link that creative element to student interests. So for example, I've got pupils making magazines as part of their practical production and they're, they're bringing in their hobbies. I'm doing better in this subject than I do in others because I, I enjoy what I'm doing. Whereas in, in other subjects, I do enjoy it sometimes. But it's just, it's just not as fun as creating something from just like scratch and pictures that you've had to go out and take yourself. So if you just decide on the actual text first of all, the name of the article, what you're gonna say about the car, and then we'll arrange the page together. The use of ICT in the media lessons is a real appeal to their learning styles again. We've got a very kinesthetic approach. It's hands-on um, in terms of not just what they're doing with the laptop in front of them, but the students have been motivated to go out, take photographs, do some filming, to really create their media product. It's one of my favourite subjects. This is, it makes it more enjoyable. Like when we can do our own project, rather than the teacher telling us what to do. The boys around the school are increasingly highly motivated, and I think their sense of status, their sense of self-esteem, comes from a sense of success. And that applies to, again, something like media studies, where all of a sudden, pupils who might be struggling elsewhere, um, staff are chasing them for coursework, they're getting praise. P-E-E, -E, what does it stand for? Point evidence explanation. Fantastic, Nick, I'll give you a praise point for that, well remembered. Within the lesson, we were starting to give out a much more formal sense of, of praise that could then be totted up. So it's not just a well done, it's a formal credit, if you like. And those credits can then accumulate, and there's rewards related to those credits. So there's a real goal for them. 
So something that's not just the academic success, motivated though that is, um, the very fact that we're relating that success to other rewards, just as the real world does. OK, so you don't think you've done very well and you think it's because of lack of revision? Yeah, yeah. Yeah? Yes, sir. And what? Poor organisation? Yeah. Is, that, is that fair? Yeah, that's fair, sir. Hall Green has introduced what they call assertive mentoring across the whole school in order to target the underachievers. C or D. These mentors are both teachers and members of the senior leadership team. This intervention is already showing signs of having a positive impact on male pupils. You went away over Christmas. Assertive mentoring is more hardcore than your traditional mentoring. In the past, mentoring has been very much about discussion with the pupils, making sure they're comfortable with school, understand what they've got to do. And the assertive mentoring is far more directed than that. Um, we then set target grades, which is a predicted grade with a bit extra on it. So you're looking at an aspirational target for each pupil. Every five weeks we gather data from staff about pupil progress, which is something we've never done before. For years 10 and 11, if there are pupils that we're concerned about, they're assigned a mentor who meets with them on a regular basis. If you leave your revision until the end of this term, you're going to leave yourself with something like five or six weeks, leaving yourself a handful of days for each subject. So you've got to start now, and that's, we'll come back to that, because that's going to be part of the plan about how, you know, how you're going to get better. OK, for geography, improve your coursework. How are you going to do that? When are you going to do that? I've started to improve my coursework. OK, go on. But I'm, I'm going to start from GPU 6 as well. Thank you very much. I think that Sully is, is the, the kind of student who, if he's left entirely to his own devices, can lose focus and he can move off track. And what he needs is a mentoring process like the, like the one we've set up. Uh, really do something just, to, just as straightforward and, and as basic as, as keeping him on track and keeping him aware. The mentoring session went quite well because now I know what to do to improve my grades for my GCSEs. Well, speaking to you, sir, he's explained to me what to do, like revise, take responsibility. Year 10, Sully had been a bit of a lad, not really working, not really focused. We started the mentoring process and the change was immediate and, and very visible. The downside, of course, is that since Christmas, there's been a bit of a slip back because, you know, he's Sullivan, not an angel. Uh, Hence the meeting today, when we've, we're refocusing on what, on what those target grades, what those challenge grades are. And my aim, and Solomon's promise, is that we're going to get back to what he was like last term. One of the drivers on boys' achievement that we think is having the impact is the assertive mentoring. And we do think that it, it's something that could be replicated in other schools. And resource-wise, it's an incredibly economic way of introducing something that will have fairly immediate impact. It does depend on staff goodwill to some extent. But in our experience, most staff are uh, quite happy to try anything that will um, lead to, to greater levels of achievement. At the end of the day, there's no magic wand. There's no secret answer as to how you engage the boys. We just keep trying and experimenting. And where we have successes, we keep it. And where it doesn't work, they'll be willing to look, start again, and let's look for the next thing.